of Charlotte and this is Tired Mama Tries to Read. Uh, so I, it's week two of October and I have managed to finish one of the books. So I'm going to tell you a bit about that. I'm also just going to catch up with my Jane Eyre reading, just tell you a little bit where I've got to. And I'm going to tell you what I'm going to read next. And I have made an additional purchase, but I really don't think there's enough room in October for me to finish it. So um, we'll start with Silas Marner. And I made a terrible, a terrible, but yeah, I suppose good in some ways discovery this week, which was that um, the copy that I've got, which if you watch my last video, you'll know I was completely appalled that it didn't have notes to go with it. Despite its beauty, it had no notes. Um, I, when I was tidying my fiction shelves, which are overloaded with books, as I said in my last video as well, I finally got them into alphabetical order for the first time in years. They haven't been in alphabetical order since I moved here, I don't think, just because, you know, of, the, of Idris and the fact that he is not, he doesn't make it easy to do tidying. So um, I finally did it and I actually realised I had some duplicate books, which I honestly thought I'd cleared all my duplicates. Um, when I lived in my flat and had many, many more books than I've got now, I had a few shameful duplicates. You'd, I mean, I just couldn't keep track of what I had. And in fact, in some instances, I even had triplicates when I actually came to box them up to move here. So yeah, um, I thought I got rid of them all, but obviously not because lo and behold on my shelves, Silas Mana, and it's an edition with notes. I was devastated. Um, so I'm gonna keep both. I am gonna keep this one because I've written notes in it. I've made little comments along the way. And I'm going to keep this one because then I'm going to, if I reread it, I'll, I'll have an edition where I can actually refer, <laughs> refer to notes. So the reason I might reread it is because I actually enjoyed it in the end. I'd said in the beginning in my last video that I wasn't enjoying it, that I was halfway through and it was boring, that the characters were quite caricatured and I couldn't really relate to them. Um, it's not the be all and end all if you can't relate to a character, but it, you at least have to understand their motivations, I think. And I think what stood in the way between me understanding and sympathising with Silas Marner was that I couldn't understand why somebody wronged would not defend themselves. I found it really weird. So it's not a spoiler to say the premise of, of the book is that Silas Marner lives in an industrial town and he goes to a chapel there. He has a social circle there. He lives a very devout life. He becomes engaged and his life is looking like it's going to be a fairly quiet and eventful but joyous one. And then his, um, one of the other fellow parishioners who happens to be his best friend um, betrays him, sets him up um, for a crime and without any sort of guilt whatsoever, pins it on Silas Marner. And he responds to that by just walking away. He doesn't even say to the to the other people in the chapel it was it was him i think his name's william but i might have got that wrong he doesn't even accuse him publicly he, he's completely silenced by it and his fiance walks away from him and I, i'm pretty sure she goes off with william actually um and he just lets it happen I, he moves as far away as he possibly can and he lives a life of penance i mean he really is as though he committed the crime and he almost believes he committed the crime because of this bizarre act of of just complete isolation and I, I I've really found it difficult at the beginning to understand that but actually the more I reflected upon it the more I began to feel a sense of kinship with him and the more I realized that even though I don't think his actions were very helpful to him I could see that he was so he was so completely betrayed and felt that in order to actually get out of that he would have to then go about the lengthy process of proving someone else guilty. Someone who obviously had a lot more wits about them than him because he, you know, was incredibly cunning in this betrayal. But he, he, I think he just didn't have the spirit for it. After the betrayal, I think he's obviously a broken man because he goes off and lives this solitary life for, for decades. So I kind of, you know, I just started to reflect upon it and realised that, yeah, that I could see why he did it. Um, and then it leads to all the other reasons why he does all the other things he does. And once you've got that sympathy, then I think it's hard to break with a character. Um, and he he's he the whole book is about him being redeemed. And it says quite clearly on the back that it's through an orphan child, Epi, that he feels his sense of um, 
will wander in the world he becomes part of the world again and it's really beautiful the second half is really well done um i don't think you have to like children to enjoy it you genuinely love epi she's adorable and i, I think you kind of love the social stance that elliot takes with the story um yeah um it's it, it well, this might be a spoiler but i like the ending so if you know if you he returns to his industrial town and if you've read the book, you'll know what happens. If you haven't read the book, read it and you'll find out what happens. But the ending for that, I thought was very, it, it teaches you a lesson about what matters in life. So yeah, I would, I will read it again. Can't believe I'm going to say that, <laughs> but I will. And for Jane Eyre, I am now, I am here in Jane Eyre and I've got two chapters to read tonight, which is why I've got to be here. And then this is my notes. Um, I'm really enjoying it, but we're up <laughs> we're up to the wedding, which is obviously I mean you must know the plot of Jane Eyre. I, if you don't, I would just stop watching this video. But the the plot of Jane Eyre is that the wedding to Rochester doesn't come off, and uh, it all grinds to a halt because he's obviously secretly married to uh, Bertha, the or Antoinette is this her real name, uh, the woman in the attic. So. I have to say my interest in the plot wanes from here on in because we're at the very boring part. Well, there's a bit that will come where she's quite distraught, which is actually very interesting. But when she goes off and starts a little school and has her friendship with St. John, I'm not interested. It, generally speaking, in the film, I completely lose interest in that bit. I would gladly fast forward. Um, and I had, it's been a long time since I, since I read the book, but I'm pretty sure my interest is going to wane in a similar fashion. So I have, I think the last bit of the book is going to be a bit of a slog. I think it's just because myself, as with my friend Katie, who I'm reading this with, we both really love Mr. Rochester and we love the interaction between him and Jane. So we've had a lot to say about it on this reread. And um, we are really irritated by the fact that she is so... Um, She's so stuffy about things once he proposes. You know, I won't have silk and I don't want to kiss and I don't want to do all this. And I think the reason we get so annoyed about it is because she's such a passionate person throughout the book. You kind of feel that she's always hiding this desire to kiss him. And she's always talking about how plain her clothes are. And it does feel in a sense that she is mournful of that. So we, we are surprised, we think that she doesn't want to embrace those things when they're offered to her. She doesn't have to do it frivolously. It's a, you know, it's not, um, it's not wrong to be feminine and it's not wrong to be loved. But I think she's gone so far along the track of trying to do without them that she doesn't want to give in to it. So it is irritating, those scenes. We have, we have found them annoying. But the bit where he proposes and the nature description in that scene is almost dreamlike. And, you know, for that bit alone, it's the whole book... The whole book is beautiful. Yeah, but it's it's really, it's lush. It's the reason it is a classic, I believe. Um, so the next one I'm going to read, I was trying to tandem read books and it hasn't been massively working for me. So I'm tempted to finish Jane Eyre before I move on to this. I'm not sure yet, but it's The Time Machine is next on the list. And um, this is slimmer still. It's not even 100 pages. So it might leave me time for this one, which is the one I've picked up now, which is The Tale of Two Cities and sort of... I've, I've read several Dickens, I've read um, Great Expectations, I've read that a couple of times, I've read Hard Times, um, another one that I can't remember, might have been me, Edwin Drood, I can't remember now, but um, I think this one would be up my street, but Doris, I think you were saying that you were bored at the beginning, so... I mean, it, it, I think it's that time in the month now where we can sort of, there's two more weeks to go and it is a lot of Victorian literature to read for a whole month. So I might need to space it with something a bit more modern. And I'm looking slightly behind the camera because I've got a stack of other books that I've bought. Um, so the next, I think I'll probably do a video in a few days once um, I'm working all weekend this weekend. But once I finish work, um, I'll probably do a video of my naughty book haul just a confessional video more than anything else um, and it's all your fault because I think everything in my book haul I've seen on booktube okay he's definitely out of his bath now so I better go and um, get the little monkey in bed uh, I hope you're having a lovely evening and I'll see you soon bye